Today's video is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Hi! Because it's Alaska's hat and the episode is about little pound cake. Gagaroni macaroni. Hi, please. It's me. Brrr. I didn't think of a name today. It's me, Busly XCX, and welcome back to Hot <laughs> 2. No, that's not what it's called. <laughs> it's me, Busly XCX, and welcome back to Hot <laughs> or Rat. And today we'll be reviewing episode 7 of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars Season 8, as well as covering the online drama that's bubbled up surrounding the episode involving both Candy and Alexis and Season 15 girls Lex Noir London and Mistress Isabel Brooks. And in today's episode, our queens were challenged to improv characters in a Forensic Files parody called Forensic Queens, where we learned the truth about what had happened to Lil Miss Poundcake. And the runway category was Miss Fill in the Blank. So let's jump right in with the big drama this episode. Everyone is quitting All Stars 8. It's over. I'm sorry. In a mini a brown video, well, it's over. So first we had Heidi leaving the competition. We know that. But then this episode, we've got Alexis and Kahana discussing leaving as well. And Alexis gets upset and begins to cry when the queens are selecting roles for the challenge this week. She seems to have two choices for roles, one of which she kindly and ever so graciously gives to Jessica Wilde, and the other, which ultimately goes to Candy Muse because she says that's her only choice, yet again. And she is not at all willing to budget this. Which, like, I would say is a gray area because this is after all the competition where the queens are trying to win two hundred thousand dollars and like they should be fighting for what they want but i do think something also could be said about sportsmanship and sharing and at the same time i think there could also be something said about alexis making pretty much every moment about her which thankfully she is at least acknowledging a little bit in retrospect she even tweeted out a screenshot of a poll that green gay a youtuber put on his channel this week asking which alexis cries you're favorite and I think it's great she is so willingly and openly expressing herself and feeling her feelings but I can also see Candy's side here where she sees Alexis doing this thing again where she's crying and maybe thinking this is a ploy this is a game why is she doing this I'm not playing this I'm gonna walk away and in addition to tweeting that poll Alexis also tweeted this out before the episode airs let me say whatever conversation set me off that's not the fault of the Candy Muse or anyone else I take responsibility for the things that trigger me if you support me cool but zero tolerance for hate toward my sisters and if you want to hate me touch grass candy muso took a different approach on twitter this week someone tweeted out a clip of what was happening in the workroom which candy quote tweeted and wrote those white women tweets are dangerous which then led to different people discussing this topic online and some season 15 girls got involved lux noir london wrote on twitter quote tweeting drag race hashtag i stand with candy muse and then in a now deleted tweet alexis responded to lux writing lux this is not the tweet my tears weren't about picking roles. There was a lot going on in my head and that's not on candy, but please be a sister. Which, as I said, was deleted at some point and then followed up with a tweet from Mistress Isabel Brooks where she wrote, Lux, this is not the tweet. Alexis's tears weren't about picking roles. There was a lot going on in her head and that's not on candy, but please be a sister. But back to the episode. After the Alexis drama, we then see Kahana struggling in the workroom. She is seemingly not happy that this is yet another acting slash comedy challenge challenge and she's not so sure how she's gonna make this role work and it was at this point she actually has a moment where she's packing her bags and Jimbo is seen asking what's going on she's leaving and then several minutes later RuPaul bursts through the door saves the day and takes all the queens to church her parting message being don't let your feelings in the moment sabotage the bigger picture which seems to get the queens back on track and allows us to finish the episode first up Jessica Wilde who in the challenge plays the character of Yuri Drag and the setup of this forensic files parody is essentially there are queens Jessica Wild and Kahana Montrese playing characters who are coming back to All Stars to film a new season. Jessica is a former Miss Congeniality and gives us some rather interesting testimony on Lil Poundcake's disappearance and how she may or may not have been involved in it. We hear she noticed Lil Poundcake was missing because she left her ETB card in the workroom on Taco Tuesday and doesn't seem to know what happened, but then later admits that Lil Poundcake actually stole her man, making herself a suspect. But she reassures us in the same testimony that she's not a Republican and she didn't 
little pound cake. And honestly, Jessica in this was so, so funny. And I could listen to her talk endlessly for ages because if you let her, she will just escalate the crazy things that she's saying to crazier and crazier heights. And it's just so entertaining. Plus, I think she did a great job of balancing the crazy words she was saying with a pretty serious and like real performance. Did a great job and this was <laughs> And overall the runway, she escalates that crazy one more time and gives us a look that is themed after sausages. In fact, she is Miss Sausage, titled from Eating 15 Sausages. Because why the hell not? And she's got them in a crown dangling off her waist. I don't know, this is wild. Jessica Wild, campy, it's silly, it's fun. It's why we love Jessica, because she's so pretty and so zany with what she does. And like, does this make any sense? No, but is that also why I love it? Yes, this look is <laughs> And next we have Kahana Montrese. But first, let me show you how I go from scruffy queen to mustachey queen with the Beard Hedger Pro from today's video sponsor, manscaped.com. The Beard Hedger Pro is a cordless, rechargeable, and waterproof beard trimmer. It's got a powerful 7200 RPM motor, a titanium coated T blade, and 20 different haircutting links to choose from with the zoom wheel. That uses only one car. First, I got my face wet for a little lubrication and set the zoom wheel to a one for my neck, jaw, and chin area. Then I zoomed out to an eight to trim the tails of my mustache to give it a slight taper. I also love using the Lawnmower 4.0 to keep my bushes trimmed all summer long to keep the heat and sweat at bay. And the Lawnmower is also cordless, rechargeable, and waterproof so you can use it in the shower. And when you order the Lawnmower as part of the Performance Package 4.0, you'll also get the Weed Whacker nose into ear hair trimmer, plus the Crop Reserver anti-chafing ball deodorant, and ball toner spray for freshness all day. Treat yourself and trim yourself by clicking the link in the description of my video to shopmanscaped.com. You'll get 20% off your order plus free international shipping when you use code BUSSY at checkout. But that's not all. Order the performance package today and you'll also get two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag and Manscaped Boxer Briefs. Thanks Manscaped for sponsoring today's video. Who we see, as we mentioned, was struggling to pick a character, figure out how she was going to play the role, and she ends up with this role, I'm a Fox, which is basically just her and like really Jessica Wilde character was just her too. I'm just having another moment where I'm like, I don't think that they picked these roles in the workroom at all. I feel like they give these roles to the queens before the season even starts and the illusion of them picking roles is just like for entertainment. But that's just a theory, a drag theory. Anywho, she's playing the character of I'm a Fox, the pretty pageant queen who was a bitch on her original season and is now a bigger bitch. And she in our little skin it is the prime suspect because she hates Little Miss Pound Kid. And her take on it is fairly serious, which feels a little dry at times, but I don't think she did a bad job in this. Like Michelle said, I think she is finding a comfortability with acting and even comedy. And I think her next journey is just gonna be figuring out where to and how to add layers to make her characters more dynamic. So I give this like a warming up. Another runway, she gives us Miss Tired Ass Showgirl. And this title is meant to be her take on a Vegas showgirl doing a pageant. And my immediate thoughts where yes, this is another pretty look from Kahana. She looks gorgeous, but we also just watched her play the pageant queen in the challenge. And pretty much every episode, she has done some flavor of glittery sparkle Las Vegas showgirl pageant drag, which has been great. She has absolutely nailed that aesthetic down. But again, I think the judges and the fans are going to be looking for a few more layers, especially on Drag Race All-Stars. And especially with her picking this title, Tired Ass Showgirl, this was her opportunity to show off some comedy or stupidity in a way that complements all of her beauty. Yes, this look is a very safe and beautiful hat. And next up, our favorite notes, La La Ree, who we hear saying this episode, I need to win. I gotta win. I need to win. And the fire that she has lit under her own butt absolutely takes her to the finish line this week. She gets the character of Cherie Sha, the Sha is silent, Coleman. Layers, right? It's about layers. And her character in this skit is a security guard who we do ultimately learn is responsible for the disappearance of little pound cake because she saw taking her out as an opportunity to get into the biz. And this character from La La was so real, effervescent, and like completely brought to life. The facial expressions, hand movements, everything about what La La was doing was fully in the zone. And we have seen in the various acting comedy challenges we've had so far, flashes of this very funny La La underneath scripts that were given to her. But I think having this opportunity to ad lib, improv, and put her own flavor into these silly characters that she does really allowed her to shine this week. She was eloquently hot in this challenge. And over on the runway, she gives us a look she titles Miss Bootlegger. And uh, she's an all gold 
fake, of course. And she is carrying down the runway items such as fake furs, fake bags, and even a fake copy of an Asia O'Hara DVD. It's stupid, it's silly, it's drag. But in terms of visual presentation, I think it was a little rough around the edges, which she was, it seems, trying to sell as part of the look. But to me, it almost read as doing the easy way out here, like just kind of putting things on things instead of really bringing it to the finish line in a fully realized eleganza vision, right? But I was entertained, so I'm gonna give this like a three flame hot. And next up, Candy Muse, who is not going to compromise. And that's on period. So in the challenge, she fights for and gets the role of Detective Anita Clue. And RuPaul gives her this critique of, you made me laugh because you said you weren't a detective and then you were a detective. <laughs> Followed up with a lot of very obvious fake laughter. And we also see them acknowledge that she basically was just Candy playing Candy in this, which is what she always does. And most of the time this works well for her because at the end of the day, these challenges are really about entertainment and not necessarily about acting skill or bringing a new other character to life, right? It's about making your drag character shine. And she does that. But I'm highlighting that to ask the question, why is she so adamant about these different roles if at the end of the day, she's just gonna play the character the same anyways. Food for thought. Anywho, as the detective, she's interrogating La La Ri and eventually gets out of her that yes, yeah, she was responsible for the disappearance of uh, Little Miss Pound Cake. And during all this, she is pushing her performance further than many of the other queens tonight. She has got her feet on the table. She's standing up. She's yelling at the cameras. She's playing with her sucker. I mean, really, she is doing things and adding layers, even if they are additional candy layers to this performance that make it very entertaining. And I would give this performance it's a very safe hot. And over on the runway, she gives us a look she titles Miss Arrogant. I think the hair on this look is amazing. And the look itself I think is fun. I'm not totally sure how the arrogant title really ties into everything that she's doing here. I think it's more just meant to be like, look at me, feel my oats and serve and feel my charisma, uniqueness, nerve and talent. But some more clear direction might have helped, I think, with the overall appearance, kind of giving Cindy Lou Who meets like the Grimace, but it's fun. And I would give this like a three film hot. Next up, Alexis. Alexis, Alexis, Alexis. So in the challenge, she plays the role of the reporter investigator side of things. She's Effie Lee Bailey. And this character in particular, I think was a little stiff for what was going on with the rest of the Queen's characters. Which isn't to say she wasn't adding little funny layers, like she made a joke about holes and Michelle Visage and like had toilet paper on her shoe walking down the hallway at one point. But I agree with what Michelle said about the role not really taking off. It was kind of like there was such a seriousness in the way she would look at the camera that it felt like we weren't allowed to laugh. And similar to Kahana, she felt in control of her character, but just ultimately wasn't entertaining. But she wasn't bad, just a little flat here, so I'd give it a warming up. And over on the runway, she comes out as Miss Man Pig. And she says that she is feeling her gorgeous jock fantasy with, of course, a red hanky as a train. Google it. It's RuPaul's favorite activity that he loves to joke about. And um, this is a very gay look, I'll say that. And it's pretty enough as a pageanty fantasy, but there's something about the look that is just too obvious. I don't like giant letters across a chest. And I don't love how the giant red hanky is just a red bandana. I think she could have done something a lot more interesting with that and made it more dynamic because it really doesn't even match the rest of the look in my opinion. I'm not sure if her goal here was to be intentionally tacky, but I just feel like it's lacking like a taste level. For me, it's a rot. And finally, oh wow, it's Jimbo, who in the challenge plays Eva Dentz, the scientist, well, German forensic examiner who is investigating the case of Loma's pound cake and where she might be. And the big shtick that Jimbo adds to this character is her stink finger, which a really, really wild, really wild, like her mind is so crazy, but this stink finger is, as she says, something that she uses to swab and swipe at every crime scene to find traces of DNA or fibers of Miss Pound Cake, what have you. Again, funny little weird ad-libbed layers really brought this specific performance to life and in such a small role, something you gotta do. You gotta have something really memorable and Jimbo is so good at that. This was hot. And over on the runway, she is Miss McGee. Big surprise, I, I guess, there. But still funny, still irreverent, still, I think, celebratory of her drag and finding different ways to present herself. This is very glamorous and beautiful for her, but also still campy and silly. It's very Jimbo, and I just really enjoy the different Jimbo characters that we've gotten to see on the runway. You know, we've got fashion, we've got beauty, classic drag, and I would give her double Z's a double hot. 
And the way this episode goes to La La Ri, very rightly so, she played the biggest, most entertaining character in this skit, and it just felt really right to see her fully give us the La La Ri experience this season, and loved what she did. And in the bottom two, we've got Kahana and Alexis, other picks that I do mostly agree with. And I think there is a debate maybe to be had Alexis versus Candy here in the bottom, because on one hand, we had Alexis who did have, I think, a fully realized character, that was just not entertaining. And then we had Candy, who was an underdeveloped character that we've seen many times, but was very entertaining. I do think the show will always pick the choice that's more entertaining when it comes to things like this, even when RuPaul himself at the beginning of the episode says things like this challenge is all about creating characters. It's not. So we then see La La Ri lip sync to a Lizzo song, which she does an excellent job to. And having no other competition on the stage, I think she absolutely deserved the win here. So congratulations to La La, her $10,000 and her first win of the season. But concerning my overall thoughts for this episode, this was a challenge that I did ultimately actually enjoy. And I really found myself thinking that everyone did quite a good job. However, it was also, I think, a difficult challenge to evaluate because these daytime TV shows like Forensic Files are themselves kind of campy in a sense. I think there are definitely a crowd of people like myself and probably Rue who enjoy them in kind of ironic sense. So recreating them as a parody almost kind of feels like you're watching a parody of a parody. And the other thing I found interesting was I actually was expecting this to be more of a live action thing considering RuPaul did say the words improv and it didn't really come off as improv, right? It, it felt more like the queens got their roles, wrote their own lines, studied them, and then just recited them with some ad libs. And the queens did seem to be very specific about the roles that they wanted and why. So I did wonder how much of the character was truly outlined versus created by the queens themselves. And now it's time for... Hottest Hots! In the challenge, I'm going to give it to La La Ri, and on the runway, Jimbo. And I also ask my patrons over on patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where my patron family gets exclusive member benefits like early access to my YouTube videos, access to exclusive videos, and more. And you can join by clicking the link in the description of my video. And they voted for La La Ri in the challenge, and La La Ri on the runway. And finally, I want to say thanks to you for watching today's video and give an extra special shout out to today's video sponsor, Manscaped, who you can shop using the link in the description of this video. You'll save 20 percent on your order and use code bussy at checkout finally i want to give an extra extra special shout out to caitlin Froisio. i definitely didn't say that right but uh, we're gonna check on that and angus who've all just joined my patreon at the hot and hottest hot tiers and ashley brungart daniel sandez dorothy hall felicia frankie jeffrey steenberg what's that matthew burns matto panda kitty sailor Shark. Steven Topher, Tyler Hendricks, MD, Wheelie, and Will and Tana, who are all supporting me at the Bussy Queen Collector tier. See you later. Love ya. Bye.